In the previous episode, we revealed the factors responsible for the production of substandard cement blocks. In this episode, we will be visiting a block making factory to see how to make a cement block the standard way. Every industry and profession abides by a set of rules, guidelines and standards that ensures best practices in all of its operation. In like manner, there are rules guiding the making of cement blocks. Therefore, we will be exploring these simple basic rules. First things first, storage is key. It is important to pay attention to the storage of all the production components. Cement should be stored on a raised platform in a suitable weather-tight condition building. Sand should be stored in an open clean environment and protected against clay, dirt and organic matters. Water should be stored in galvanized steel or plastic tanks. Mixing each of these components in a measurable and consistent proportion is also important and is the key to the quality of the cement block that will eventually be produced. One bag of cement to four wheelbarrow measurement of sand or eight head pan measurement of sand. For a manual mix, this should be done about six times that is, dry mix three times before adding water and wet mix three times after adding water. Scoop the mixture into the vibrating machine for compaction. Let the cement block so formed, air cure for 24 hours and then water cure it by spraying with water for 7 days before stacking. And note that stacking should not be more than 5 courses high. The quality of that vibration also could help compact the materials together to give you a very awesome, well vibrated block. Now, once it's been produced, you need about seven days of cure, of continuous wetting of water with it, so that it gradually gains strength until you get to a point when it gains full strength. It's beyond that you can now start supplying to different um, construction sites for use. The quality of curing determines by and large the strength of your block at the end of the day. So if you know you are going for the best quality, then it's important to adhere to standards. If the block is being used in a load-bearing point, then it's important that during the course of production, the production house is intimated about the minimum weight that that block should have. Because it's serving as a weight carrier. That's why we call them load-bearing, because they are carrying weight. Now, there are, there are areas that you could lay the blocks that are more or less that it's not load-bearing, so you're not so particular about it. But you realize that most people would we actually put a premium on getting the right blocks, especially when they're using it for load-bearing points. In the next episode, we will be revealing the necessary tests required to be carried out before buying a cement block.